welcome back. In one of my previous videos, sometimes back, some time back, yeah, easy for me to say, I was repairing something, I don't remember what it was, and I mentioned that on older equipment, older radios and older uh, test equipment, that surprisingly it's not the vacuum tubes that are usually bad. They have stood the test of time and have a very good, if you will, shelf life. They last a long, long time and function perfectly well. Most of the failure points on equipment, older equipment, is either going to be the capacitors or the resistors. And I said, why don't I do a little video on that? Because <clears throat> over the last month or so, I've been throwing away resistors. A number of years ago, I bought out a radio and TV shop that had gone out of business and came home with literally a small U-Haul full of Sam's Photo Facts and parts and miscellaneous this and that from the shop. And a lot of it was new old stock resistors. Now, you know, these are old school like you'd see in an old radio. There were boxes of these. Unfortunately, most of them aren't any good. And these are new resistors, or new old stock resistors. And just as an example, I just pulled two more out of the drawer tonight. Here's two 250-ohm 10% resistors. Now, Mike of Mike's Radio just covered this, and I almost didn't do this video after I saw his recent video. Uh, Mike does some very good repair work. I have no real interest in CB sets, uh, which seems to be his primary thing, but... Uh, He's a good tech, and I always enjoy watching a good tech work. So he was talking about pulls out of a Tram Titan, I believe it was, CB set. And even though the resistors looked very good, like this one does, they were out of tolerance. They had drifted well out of their uh, tolerance rating. So I figured I'd show that not only do used resistors do it, but resistors that have merely been sitting around for a number of years will do it. Um, we've got these 250 ohm resistors here. So I'll hook the first one up. And if I swing up here to my Hewlett Packard voltmeter, you can see that's well within 10%. It's 232 ohms, and you might say, well, that resistor's perfectly fine to use. And it could be argued that it is. But here's its neighbor, another brand new, never been on a circuit, right out of the box, 250 ohm resistor. It's reading 406 ohms. Now, I've been going through my stock over the last few months, and I've been finding in some cases these resistors are four, five, and as much as ten times their indicated value. So I no longer trust these old carbon comp composition resistors. Everything I work on now I replace with either thick film or metal film resistors or film carbon film resistors. And there's some examples here. Now, these are not the high power ones. However, it should be mentioned that you should buy these resistors from a reputable vendor. Buying them from the local, or not from the local, from the Chinese uh, cheapo vendor on eBay is probably not good. The reason being, these carbon film resistors are made, or the metal film resistors for that matter, are made by putting down a, a deposit of a metallic film or a carbon film over a ceramic core. Then they spiral cut this with a laser, just like a coil, to trim the resistor to value. And depending on the value, and depending on how much trimming was done, they can become inductors. And that can be a problem at RF. Now, I've swept some items. I swept some of these, and I'll put them up here on the screen. On this first slide here, we're looking at the bottom line is a carbon film 51 ohm resistor, or excuse me, a carbon composition 51 ohm resistor, a carbon film 50 ohm resistor, 
and a metal film 50 ohm resistor and this top trace that you see up here the one that's heading for the uh, stratosphere that one is an actual wire wound resistor of 50 ohms now it seems that your carbon film and your metal film resistor would be fine you know up to 150 megahertz so let me put another slide up here and this slide we have the same four resistors now we're going from 150 megahertz up past a gigahertz and again you can see the carbon composition resistor is fairly flat it doesn't show any much or any reactants to speak of the carbon film resistor is the uh, second highest trace you can see when you get above 400 megahertz or starting around 400 megahertz you're starting to see some reactants because of that spiral shape of the carbon film it's acting a little bit like an inductor the next line up the third line up is the metal film resistor and again it's a little bit worse at the higher frequencies now up at these frequencies you're probably going to be using chip resistors uh, you're going to be using strip line uh, type building techniques and so on and so forth so you wouldn't have to worry about it but you can see over starting over on the left hand side of the screen that upper trace that practically makes a vertical uh, line it's like a ski jump that is what happens to your wire wound resistor when you try to use it at two meters and up it is absolutely worthless it becomes a choke so bear that in mind when you're replacing components carbon composition is probably not the way to go unless you can get brandy new ones from a very reputable dealer and even then I would rather go with metal film the tolerances are held much tighter they won't drift with time they're far more temperature stable and chances are you can put them in and forget about them and if you replaced everything in your radio with metal film resistors then you could go back to worrying about nothing but capacitors and maybe the tubes okay that's it very short video just wanted to cover something that uh, or to fill in the blanks I guess that Mike may have missed if uh, you want to see a little bit more go over to uh, yeah go over to Mike's uh, radio repair and uh, watch what he did look at the resistors he pulled out of the radio and it'll give you kind of an indication of maybe those are the components you should be looking at after you change all the caps I'm the radio mechanic thanks for stopping by Hope some of this information was useful. See you again soon.